All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and show you where the spinal nerves come off of the spinal cord. Uh, if we take and draw um, the spinal cord here coming down, my fantastic drawing of the brain. So here we can see the brain attaching to our spinal cord and coming down. This is the um, conus medullaris, right? So about the level of uh, L1 or L2. But we know that there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves that come off of our spinal cord. Well, how do they actually attach to our spinal cord is what I'm going to try and draw out for you guys. And then I'm going to bring in a picture uh, that represents this a whole heck of a lot better. Uh, so let's get rid of this so that we can have room to take and draw out what we are looking at here. So. Let's maybe even use a different color so that we can represent the nerve coming off here. So we're going to start out by drawing our dorsal root. Right? So we remember that uh, the uh, coming off of the posterior side of the back side right, is also called dorsal. So uh, this here we're going to call our dorsal root. dorsal root, and then we can see an enlargement here. Well, that enlargement is going to be a cluster of cell bodies of sensory neurons. Well, we remember that, or hopefully we remember from your lecture class, hearing that a cluster of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system is called a ganglion. So uh, if we can see a cluster of these cell bodies of sensory neurons, um, in our peripheral nervous system, we're going to call it, and attaching to our dorsal root, we're going to call it the dorsal root ganglion. Right? So dorsal root ganglion. Okay. The dorsal root ganglion is just a cluster of cell bodies. Right? Uh, attaching here, it's going to be a cluster of uh, sensory neurons, cell bodies of sensory neurons. Pretty important, right? Sensory information coming into the posterior side of the spinal cord, the dorsal side of the spinal cord. So we're going to come down here. This is actually our spinal nerve. Here's the other half of our spinal nerve coming down to here. And then we can just draw a continuation on here. So dorsal root brings sensory information. If we had sensory information coming up our spinal nerve, it would head in this direction right, into the dorsal side of our spinal cord. Okay. On this side here, we're going to call it the ventral root. R. Um, there we go. So the ventral root. The ventral root is on the anterior side, right? Anterior and ventral essentially mean the same thing here. So we're going to call it the ventral root, uh, which brings motor information away from the spinal cord. Right? We talked about in here, we had these cell bodies of somatic motor neurons. Well, where do they bring their information? They bring it out of the spinal cord through the ventral root and then into our spinal nerve here. Right, so that is how our spinal nerves actually attach to our spinal cord and bring information in. Remember, all of our spinal nerves are mixed nerves. Right, they have sensory information bringing information towards the spinal cord, and they also carry motor information away. Where does that split? That splits here at the roots. Right, so we have our dorsal root, which brings sensory information into the posterior side of our spinal cord. And then we have our ventral root, which brings motor information out of our spinal cord. Right? So there's a simplistic drawing of that. What does it actually look like? Let's erase all of our drawing there. And here we can see the spinal cord. And it's not letting me make that any bigger. All right, that's about as big as it's going to get. But what we can see is here is our spinal cord, a nice transverse section through our spinal cord. You can see the dorsal root going into the posterior side there, attaching to the uh, uh, the posterior gray horn, right? or the dorsal gray horn is another way to call that. But there you can see that nice big bump, right? which is our dorsal root ganglion, a cluster of cell bodies in the uh, peripheral nervous system. Right? And here is our ventral root leaving the spinal cord and going into our spinal nerve here. All right, so very simplistic on how we did that uh, in our drawing or our sketch, but here's a great picture of that all nice and labeled for you. All right.
So let's talk about spinal nerves now. All right, our spinal nerves, we saw how they entered and exited the spinal cord, uh, but we need to take and count the number of spinal nerves and label them in an anatomy setting. Uh, so SP, spinal nerves. Right, we know that there are 31 pair of spinal nerves. 31 pairs of spinal nerves, and they're broken down very similarly to how we would in the uh, spinal cord when we're naming off the spinal cord. So there are cervical nerves, there are eight of them, right? different than the number of vertebrae in the cervical region, right? There are only seven cervical vertebrae. Here we're going to have eight cervical nerves, so be careful with your numbering here. The rest is about the same, though. Twelve thoracic, lumbar, have five pairs of spinal nerves. There are five sacral, and then coccygeal. All right, so we'll just label it CO. There's going to be one. Okay, so eight cranial nerves, twelve thoracic, five lumbar. Right five sacral, and one coccygeal. Okay. How do they actually come off of the spinal cord here? So what I'm going to do is try and draw out a representative sample of our vertebral column. Let's call this one C1, vertebrae C1, vertebrae C2. So this one's atlas, and then C2 we know is axis, right? C3, C4. Where do the nerves actually come out? Well, the nerves come out. Let's do a bright color. Let's even do white. Let's draw our spinal cord here, coming in between each one of our vertebrae, so that we can show the spinal nerves coming off of our spinal cord. We said there were eight cervical nerves. Well, the first one here comes out right here. This is nerve C1. Nerve pair, C2, C3, C4. Okay. So what we can see is that the nerves in the cervical region come out above the labeled vertebrae. Right, C1 is atlas, so right above this we would have our skull. Right. There's the base of our skull right, with the uh, spinal cord going up through the foramen magnum there. Right, but comes out in between the base of the skull and C1. So the vertebrae C1 is our first cervical nerve. We're going to call it C1. C2 comes out above C2. C3 comes out above the nerve. C3 comes out above uh, vertebrae C3. Okay. What happens when we get further down into our spinal cord, though? So let's relabel this. Draw out some more of our spinal vertebral column here. And then our spinal cord. All right, and the great thing about these is that you can sketch them out. It doesn't have to be beautiful in any way, shape, or form, right? but it at least gives us a great representative sample of this. Uh, so let's say that this is C7. T1, T2, T3. All right, so you could even start to show the ribs coming off of those thoracic vertebrae. But now, how are the nerves labeled? Our nerve pair here, again, comes out above C7, is going to be nerve C7. But wait, there are eight cranial nerves, or excuse me, eight cervical nerves, right? Not cranial, eight cervical nerves. So this one's going to be C8. Then we get into our thoracic nerves. Right? This is nerve T1, nerve T2, nerve T3, nerve pairs. Right? So once we pass the cervical region, 
the nerves are named below the representative vertebrae, right? And it's because of C8 right there. It kind of screws up the uh, way we did it. But uh, nerves C1 through C7 above vertebrae. Nerves T1 through the end come out below the vertebrae. So be careful when you're going through and labeling this. We're going to have a couple uh, we're going to have a couple models in class here showing us uh, the cervical region as well as the lumbar region. I'm going to have you try and name off different nerve pairs. Right? So uh, just be careful as you're going down through. C nerve C1 through C7 come out above the vertebrae. 